And we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome into the At Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star, and I'm a Flippin' Hippo. And today is Tuesday. I almost said Wednesday. It's Tuesday, August 18th. And we are going to talk about some tough things tonight, some realities that I think a lot of folks need to hear. Maybe not so much those of you that watch my channel, because you guys probably already do all these things. But just in case you don't, just a reminder. And if you're new to the channel, you may not have heard um, some of the tough love that I've given out in the past. And I will make a lot of funny faces tonight and smile a whole bunch. Because <laughs> whenever I'm getting snarky or a little snotty or I feel like I'm imparting a lot of tough love and not pulling any punches. I try to say it with a smile so that you guys know it comes from a really good place. Um, it really does come from a good place. I wouldn't be doing YouTube if I didn't care about people, if I didn't want to help others be successful. And that's what I want to do. I want to help other resellers become successful. I want to teach you guys how. I want to give you the tools that you need so that you can become as successful, if not more so, than Keith and I. Um, student surpasses the teacher and all of that. So it really does come from a good place. I want everyone to succeed. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be teaching. I wouldn't be doing all these videos and running a Facebook group and answering all the messages and emails every single day if I didn't care. And I do. And so when I start to see patterns of things showing up in the Facebook groups and on the Instagram posts, and I start to see resellers falling into some kind of patterns or doing certain things, I have to speak up because if I don't speak up, then I'm not a good teacher. Um, being a good teacher and being a good role model and being someone who cares to help others be better, you can't just be here when things are good and telling people, good job. You got to be here when they're doing wrong and saying, stop it. Don't do that. But I will say it with a smile because it really comes from a good place. I just want you guys to be very, very successful and not be your own obstacles, which is what a lot of people do. They get in their own way. They become their own obstacle and they hold themselves back from success. And listen, guys and ladies, we have enough obstacles in our lives, all of us. We all have our own stories and our own problems, our own family issues things that are going on with C-19 and mental health issues with the shut-in and some of us are scared of the virus and some of us miss our families and the USPS Postal Service isn't running the way it's supposed to and they're going to be increasing prices in fourth quarter and eBay is going to be implementing new item specifics which last year when they did that it trashed everyone's sales and everyone dropped to the bottom. I, and I could go on, but that would be, um, I don't want to go on. It would be negative. But there's enough out there. We have enough obstacles. We have enough things in our way to get over, to climb over, to succeed, that we really don't need to be in our own way. And if you are getting in your own way, you need to get out. All right, let's say hi to some folks, and then we'll jump right on into the meat of the program. Do, do, do. Robert's here, guys. That's Zombie Bargain Hunter there at the Wrench. Say hi to him. Uh, had some folks in here early. Welcome in, Jennifer and Heidi. Thanks for coming. Anna's here. Flipping Daddy. Stopping in for a bit on his break. Mary's here. Welcome in, Mary and Greg. And PJ, Ivy. Hello, Debbie. Roxy. And I see Tammy on my live stream on StreamYard, but I don't see her in the uh, playback on YouTube, which is weird. But hi, Tammy. I did see you. Um, Nomen the Frog guys, say hi to them. That's Bill and David. That's uh, two very good friends of mine. They have a blue wrench. Um, they're also resellers. I always introduce them as Bill and David, my very good friends. But they are also a power couple. Um, they are married. They run a business together. They're amazing. Um, Marilyn, Anna, and Ready Steady Sales. Isn't that fun to say? Ready Steady Sales. Okay, so coming from a good place, I'm not here to be, I'm not here to make anyone feel bad, and I'm not here to make anyone feel less or like they're doing wrong. I'm here to lift you up. I'm here 
to keep you guys from doing the things that you could be doing that could be holding you back and get out of your own way. I mean, we have so many things in 2020 that we have to overcome. So number one is probably the best lesson I'm going to give you tonight. Stop. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> number one of five. So tonight we're going to talk about five things that we all need to do starting tonight. Not tomorrow, not Thursday, not next Monday. Oh, brand new week. We start all over. Not September 1st for the new month. Don't even wait till Q4 in October. I want you guys to start implementing these five things today. So like when we're done with this live show and I log off and say bye to you guys, you're to go start doing these things immediately. Okay. All right. Hi, Jessica. Welcome in. Um, Georgia, I see you. And, uh, Endorphin says, thank you both, Star and Robert just sold a huge line yesterday. Sent him off to the new home. Um, so that's awesome. I do really well with lions, especially the bigger ones. I can get a lot of money for them. So that's awesome. Okay, let's get into it. These five things that you guys are all going to start doing tonight, right? Immediately after the live show. The most important one I've put at the number one place we're going to talk about first. Stop making excuses. Stop it. I put up a uh, meme over the weekend on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's at Flippin' Hippos. And each day I put up an inspirational post. I would to say it's each morning, um, but sometimes I forget in the mornings because I have a lot going on and I don't remember until the afternoon. But I do put up or try to every single day. I miss one here and there. I put up an inspirational or a motivational or a quote or a meme of some kind every day just to kind of help everybody trudge through the week and remember who we are and what we can accomplish when we put our minds to it. Um, and over the weekend, I put up one that asked the question, are your excuses more important to you than your dreams? Are they? Is it more important for you to, oh, my dog, my back, my kids, my leg, my death pile, my thrift stores are closed, I don't feel good, I'm hungry, I'm tired, it's hot. Whatever your excuses are, is it more important for you to sit there and make those excuses than it is to pay off your debt, go on a vacation, buy a home, buy a new car, whatever your goals and dreams are, whatever you're reselling for, what's more important to you? To sit around and make excuses and never ever be successful because you're so busy with your excuses? Or is it more important to accomplish your dreams and your goals? If you answer one way, that's wrong and you probably need to um, pack up all of your inventory, send it to me and Casey so we can wholesale it for you on our Shopify. And then you can just go on about your way and go get a job back in the real world. The real world, like reselling's fake, but you know what I mean. Um, because if, if your dreams aren't important enough for you to stop making excuses and to get up every day motivated to work and to make this happen and to make the money that you need for whatever your dreams are, then you shouldn't be doing this. Um, we're going to get more into this in number two, especially and somewhat in number three, but this is not a vacation. Being a reseller and working for yourself and being an entrepreneur, people love to throw that word around. That's not to mean that you get to sit at home and play video games and read books and stream Netflix and binge reading all the books from the library you checked out and lounge around in your pajamas all day and portraying yourself on social media as an entrepreneur who works from home while you're really doing nothing. That's just not how it is. Thank you so, so much for the super chat, Greg. $5. You find some of the best motivational memes and quotes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you look forward to them. I actually look forward to sharing them with you guys. I save stuff to my phone all the time when I see it and hold it back for the Instagram. Um, so you got to stop making those excuses. You guys, you're not on vacation. This is not a joke. This isn't 
work one day a week and take six off. Unless you've already made six figures at reselling and you've already purchased all the cars that you would like to have and you've already purchased your house and paid off all your debt and you don't need money anymore, you need to be working every single day. You work for yourself now. And that is a hard reality I think a lot of people have have uh, a trouble coming to grips with. When you work for yourself, you hardly, you rarely get days off. I shouldn't say you never get days off um, because you can work really, really hard all year and take a week vacation or you can go to eBay Open if that ever happens again. Um, 2020 has been weird, yes. But for the most part, as long as you bust your ass, pardon me, bust your butt every single day, most of the time, then you can take a weekend off here to spend with your grandkids or your kids, or a week here to go to Vegas for your day open. Or you can take half a day off a week and enjoy yourself. That's what Keith and I do. Um, and Sundays, we usually take the whole day off. So we take like a day and a half off. It's not to say that you can't ever take time off, but especially in the beginning when you're first getting started, you've got to work every single day. And let me rephrase that saying we take Sundays off. We really don't. It's another half day. We still list in the morning. Um, End old listings, resell, well, sell similar. We still send out offers on Poshmark. We do a bunch of stuff in the morning. Then we go to Goodwill and Source. And then after that is when we have family time and go check on his grandparents and et cetera. And then um, Friday evenings we take off. But even on days we take off in the morning before we go do whatever we're doing for our day off, we're working in the morning. We have drafts ready to go to list. We can do unsold sell similar real quick. Um, we can send out offers, just anything to get everything awake and moving to make up for the fact that we're taking the rest of the day off. When you work for yourself, you will work harder than you've ever worked for anyone else. Um, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That's awful. Um, hopefully they get everything back up and running. Um, sorry, I was reading the chat and then I lost my train. You guys know I do that. Um, yeah, you'll work harder for yourself. So it's a choice you have to make and it's a conscious choice. I want to work for myself doesn't mean lounging around all day and posting on Instagram and your other social media that you're an entrepreneur so that you look cool to people, but in reality, you're not working especially in the beginning, okay? When you're first getting started, and this goes with brick and mortar stores too, we're not unique. You resellers are not unique in this, that. If you start a small business doing anything in the beginning, you're going to have to work harder than you will later because you're building. If you just started on eBay and you have 50 listings, you probably need to be Working a little bit harder, you probably need to be listing 40 or 50 day a day if you want to grow faster. Once you're up to 2,000, 3,000 listings, you could probably list 10, 15 a day. See, so, but you have to work hard all the time. You will work harder for yourself. I'm going to repeat myself, but it's important for you to get this. It, you will work harder for yourself than you ever did for anyone else. The difference is, when you work hard for yourself, those goals that we just talked about and those dreams, those are going to become a reality. Those are going to come to fruition. You are going to have the fancy car. You are going to have the nice house. You are going to have no debt. When you work for a company, when you have a boss and you don't work for yourself and you go to the same place every day and you clock in and you clock out and you work really hard, at the end of the year, all the executives upstairs in the suits they've all got the new cars the new houses and no debt they're the ones going on vacation and you're still making whatever your hourly or salary wages with maybe a small raise each year if people even do that anymore i don't even know if companies give out raises but um at the end of the day you've got to stop making excuses i don't care what your excuses are they are not valid that sounds really harsh, but I mean, short of a death in the family or you being so seriously ill that you cannot get out of bed, your excuses are not valid. I know single moms with children, more than two, under the age of five, 
or they were sent home at the beginning of the year and they had to homeschool. I know plenty of single moms with young children who do this full time and make 50,000 or more a year. I know older people who've already retired from their jobs that have physical limitations that do this full time and make more than 50,000 a year. Some of them make six figures. I know people who are middle-aged or young with disabilities and chronic pain and issues that keep them from doing things quote unquote normal. And I'm one of those folks. So, um, and they still make it work. So whatever your excuses are, get over it. They're not valid. Like I said, there's very few exceptions to that. If you have a death in the family, of course you need time to grieve and to travel and to be with family and go to funerals, obviously. And if you're so physically ill that you cannot get out of bed, obviously you can't work. I have days like that. I have chronic, terrible migraines and I have a bad back or back injury and a disability that I have chronic pain all the time, excruciating, but I make it work. And the days that I can't get out of bed, that I physically cannot work, that is okay because the days that I am able to work, I'm putting in the time. I'm putting in the work. There are very few excuses that are valid. Let's say it that way. Whatever your excuses are, I will show you someone who is in a similar situation that is successful. The biggest excuses I always hear are, but I have a bad back. Well, I don't think that's an excuse because I can't stand for longer than five minutes at a time. I can't bend over. I can't lift. And yes, I have a Keith, so I basically have a pack mule. But you can make it work for you with the bad back if you're by yourself by getting shelves, putting less stuff in bins as far as pulling and lifting. You can set your entire room up to accommodate the fact that you have a bad back. I did a whole entire series of videos on how to take photos and measure jeans sitting down in a rolly chair and you have other rolly chairs around you. You can always, here's the thing, you can always make things work if you want them to. If you really, really want something, you will find the way. Where there's a means, there's a way. And if you really want that Lamborghini or you really want to pay off your college debt or you really want to send your kids to school or you really want to buy a house or move to Florida, whatever it is, if you really, really want it, you're going to make it happen. If you're sitting around and making excuses, we're back to the your excuses are more important to you than your dreams. And in that case, you probably should wrap it up and quit reselling. Go work for someone else. Let me catch up on the chat and we'll get into number two. Um, corporate downsizing is out of control. I thought this video was going to be about bunny rabbits and easy shortcuts. This is real talk. <laughs> I don't ever talk about bunny rabbits and shortcuts. And I never shoot, what do I always say? I never shoot unicorn rainbow farts and glitter at you people. It's reality all the time. Hello, Lisa. So number two. Make a work schedule and stick to it. Again, this is a job. And I said we were going to get more into this with number two. This is a job. This is not star takes a vacation and lays in bed. and read. Would I love to lay on the couch all day and read, reread every Stephen King book I've ever read and read every new to me author and all the new books in the world? And when I was done with that, binge every horror movie and horror TV show and all the true crime and serial killer shows on Netflix and Hulu and prime. Yes, that would be the ultimate. I'd be really like a job of the hut fat, but <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't love to lay on the couch and do what they want to do? Or I guess there are some people that do the thing outside with the physical activity. Um, you probably that if you could just go outside and play all day or ride your bike all day, um, that would be the dream for you. But um, that's not what this is. This isn't, you know, Sally goes to the park every day and feeds the ducks or Donald watches TV every day or a star lays around and reads Stephen King. This I keep touching my phone and it is unplugging and plugging back into the laptop. Sorry for all the noise. It's a new phone. We just upgraded today. So I'm charging it. Okay, so this is a job. So you got to get a work schedule. You have to stick to it. 
think of it like, yes, you work for yourself. So you have some freedom and you have the ability to create your own schedule and create your own hours and work around everything in your life. If your kid needs you in the afternoon, you can work half a day in the morning and half in the evening. If you have an emergency and you have to take your animal to the vet, you can work around that. If you want to take a vacation, you can work around that. You can always work extra before and after. You do have the flexibility of saying, I'm my own boss. I want to work second shift because I like sleeping in in the mornings and I'm a night owl. I like to get up early and have everything done and then spend my evenings in front of the TV, whatever it is. You get to create your own schedule and you have the flexibility and the luxury absolutely of doing that. But you still have to work. So you have to create a schedule that works for you and you have to stick to it. Um, I wanted to see what um, Bill and Dave said up here. I would rather work 80 hours a week for myself. Yes. I would rather. Yes, absolutely. Um, so I see Greg's question. I'm going to put it up because I can answer it at the end because I will get totally sidetracked. So pick a schedule and stick to it. But like I said, we do have the luxury and the ability to create a schedule for ourselves. So unlike when you used to work outside of the home, you may have been the kind of person like me who didn't like to get up early and you struggled in the morning and you drug your feet and you're half asleep and you're miserable at work and you're always tired. You can make your own schedule now, so make it work for you. You have to make one, though. You have to work. This is not a vacation. But work it for you. If you have chronic pain, is it worse at night or worse in the morning? Work around it. Work around your kids. Work around your family. Work around your own self, your own limitations, and your abilities. And create something that you love. I like to sleep till 9 or 10. That's just me. I like to be up till two or three in the morning. I don't, I don't always like to be. I have insomnia, but I've learned to live with my insomnia. So I've created a schedule and a sleeping pattern that works for me that I've now accommodated or gotten used to. So find out when you're most active, when you're most um, vibrant in your brain and just create a work schedule that works for you, your family, your friends, anything in your life that you need to work your job around. But then you have to stick to it. If you say, I'm going to work from 2 to 10 because I like second shift, you better be working from 2 to 10. You can take breaks. Yeah, you took breaks out in the corporate world too. Um, you can take breaks, get up, stretch, walk around, get a drink, take an hour for dinner, watch a TV show while you eat, whatevs, but you still got to work. You still have to work. Um, Greg says, I have so many people ask me to show them how to eBay and I don't waste my time. Yeah, a lot of people realize that this involves work and they hightail it out. Because honestly, if you just look at all of our social media, all of us, not just YouTubers, not just social media influencers like myself, all of you, all of us collectively as resellers, most of us are genuinely happy most of the time because we're doing what we love to do. We're making our own schedules. We're making our best lives for ourselves. We're out shopping, thrifting. We're on that hunt. We're excited. We're posting about all of our finds and look what I did and look how much it sold for. And so if you just look at our social media, we seem like a really happy bunch of people who hardly ever have to work. I mean, it really comes off that way to the outside world. Um, because when you're doing what you love, that shows. And when you're always showing all your exciting finds and how much they sell for, and you're talking about, I was able to go on this vacation or pay this bill because of my reselling. We paint a picture of a really glamorous lifestyle. It's not glamorous at all. Um, it's nice that we get to be our own bosses and create our own lives but it's not glamorous. We we don't really often see that side of reselling on social media. So people from the outside looking in, look in and go, ooh, look, all they do is go to yard sales and they go thrifting and they find treasures and they sell them for lots of money and they always look happy and they're always going out to eat and on vacations and they all look like a bunch of happy people with money. They don't realize how much work it actually takes so number one, you have to learn what you're looking for at the thrift stores and the yard sales. You can't just willy-nilly go in and buy a Walmart pants and be making money. 
You have to learn. You have to do research. You have uh, the photographs and the listing, which is tedious as heck. I mean, listing, y'all, is so tedious. It's probably the worst part of no shipping. Packing shipping for me is the worst part of the job. Um, but that comes into play and then you got to be an accountant and you have to be customer service and you have to deal with rude buyers and scammers and all that stuff that goes with the job. Once people realize there's, they don't want it anymore. They just wanted to, they wanted to lay around and drink mimosas and, and go thrifting and just be rich, I guess. Um, but that's not what it is. It's a real job. So make a schedule and stick to it. And if you have to have a different schedule, different days of the week to accommodate anything going on with your family and their schedules, that's fine. All I'm saying is make it, make it work for you and stick to it. Treat this like a job. It is a job. When you worked outside of the house, how many times were you allowed to make an excuse to your boss about why you were late, why you had to leave early, or why you had to take time off before they fired you. Not very many. I mean, some of us might have been lucky that we might have had employers that really worked with us. But just think about if you worked for someone else and you were expected to be somewhere at a specific time to clock in on that time clock, and you were expected to stay to a certain time and clock out, on specific days of the week and you just kept coming in late and leaving early and not working because I don't feel like it. I don't want to. All the excuses that you come up with for yourself, we're back to number one again, but these are all intertwined. You cannot do that and keep your job. So why would you do that to yourself? You're trying to build a business. You are trying to become successful. You are trying to create something that makes enough money to support you the lifestyle you want to have, support continued growth in your own business, and any family that you may have. You can't do that unless you treat it like a job. If you want to continue to eat food and pay your bills and live in a house, you've got to make money. You have to. Uh, a lot of the reason why I'm so stringent and up on that soapbox about pricing high and making more money and making more profits is because of that. You absolutely have to continue to make money to continue to live a lifestyle you wanna live. And if you wanna to continue to take care of your family and your bills and maybe even move up in the world to better, uh, better houses, better cars, better whatevers, you gotta make more money. And your business shouldn't be stagnant either. So you always have to make more money to throw back into the business to get bigger and better buys, whether it's you know now buying wholesale or storage units or just better items or more items so you can grow inventory and become a volume-based business, whatever it is, you have to have continued money flow in. And unless you treat this like a job, you're not gonna have it. And just think of, imagine yourself as your own boss. Are you working enough hours every single day justify having you as an employee if you were your own boss would you fire you would you be like listen you can't keep making these excuses and not coming to work i mean if the answer is not no i guess the answer should be no right yes ask yourself are you working enough to keep yourself as an employee the answer should be yes um if it's not yes then you need to change something the third thing is i really really, really want you guys to write your goals down big, bigly, hugely. I want you to put them somewhere. You will see them every single day. And if it is all possible, I want it to be somewhere where you will not only see it every single day, but I want you to see it all day long. So if you have a desk you work at or a specific chair you sit in, if you list from your phone, I want you to be able to look up at the wall and see it. I want it big. You could put pictures or it could just be writing. But I really want you guys to do this. Um, however, you have to make this happen. Get a dry erase board. Get a big piece of a uh, regular size. I don't know why I said big. Get a regular size piece of printer paper and write on it big with a marker. 
I want to pay off my college debt. I want a new car. I want a new house. I want to send my kids to college. I want to get a new dog. I want to move. I want a um, new furniture. I want an air fryer. Whatever it is that you want that's your goal. I want to quit my job. There's a good one. A lot of people want that. I want to quit my job. I want to do this full time. Whatever your goals are, and it can be one goal or many, many goals or one big goal and a lot of mini goals leading to the big goal, which is probably the best way to make goals, um, is to figure out what the end desire is and then all the little steps that you have to take to it. And you can write those on paper or dry erase board with arrows to your goal. And it doesn't have to be neat. It doesn't have to be pretty. If you're someone who likes pretty, but don't spend too much time on it. Because if you spend too much time putting your goal on the wall, now you're not listing. Now you're not sourcing. Now you're not selling. Now you're not making that money, right? But you can cut out magazine pictures of houses or cars. Um, I have friends who like to have their dream boards really pretty. So they have like pictures they tape on, they cut out from magazines. Um, if you have kids, you can help them. You could have them help you do this, like a little project together, like an arts and craft project with your kids. Um, or you could just write in chicken scrawl, barely legible doctor's handwriting. I don't care. But write it down and make it big and put it where every single day your here comes the train. Every single day your eyes are going to fall on it and you're going to look at it and you're going to remember that's why I'm doing this. If you have children, put their photos up too. Because that's another goal that's another thing thing not a thing um it's another reason so if you're looking up and you can see your goal and your kids you can tell yourself that and them is why i'm doing this this is why i get out of bed every day this is why i'm working hard this is why i'm building a business this is why i'm trying to be successful and make more money but you have to be able to see them because if you don't see them every day i feel like a lot of folks let their dreams become less tangible, kind of like just off in the clouds. Oh yeah, sure, we'd all like to live in a nice big house, whatever, it's never gonna happen. It could happen, you could make it happen. A lot of folks make enough money reselling that they turn their entire lives around. They come from living in like a one bedroom apartment with a beater car and debt hanging over their head. Fast forward five years, 10 years, they have a brand new car and they live in a big house and they have no debt. It can happen. You can make it happen. You have to make it happen or it's not going to happen. So just have it somewhere where you can see it every single day and work towards it. It's not going to be quick. You're not going to go from a one bedroom apartment to a five bedroom house overnight. It's going to take years, five, 10 years. But um, that's why I said it's better to have the big goal and the little steps towards it. You know, like pay off my debt first, get a better car, then I can source more and I can get better inventory, and then I can work towards the house. Just kind of break it down. But have it where you can see it. Because if you can see your dreams and your goals and your desires every single day and remember why you're doing this and why you're working, that will enforce that dreams are more important than your excuses. We're back to number one again, but again, all of the things I'm talking about tonight all kind of tie in together. But you have to make your dreams more important than your excuses. Now, I'm gonna catch up on the chat real quick before we go to number four. Um, every time I see your Stephen King wrote 2020 quote, I give you full credit. It wasn't my quote originally. Um, I probably saw it in one of my Stephen King groups or somewhere um but it's a great quote someone in one of my Stephen king groups had it put on a t-shirt <laughs> hey junk and data girls here welcome in yeah that's a good example right there um you couldn't just tell your boss i'm just so tired i'm just gonna go take a nap every day after lunch that doesn't work not break anything <laughs> uh Speaking things in existence is absolutely a real thing. Yep, sure is. And you have to want it. Again, I've said that like 20 times, but please take that to heart. You have to want it. If you're not working for it, you don't, you don't want it. And I, I will tell people that all the time. If I keep hearing excuses from some people, I don't know what to do to help you anymore. 
I've talked to you, you know, five times and you're still making the same excuses. I don't know what to do for you anymore. Your excuses are more important than your dreams. Because clearly you're not doing anything but making excuses. you got to get out of that mindset. All right, you guys are going to love number four. Worry about yourself. Stay in your own lane. Worry about yourself. Stay in your own lane. The reason for this is like threefold. Number one, if you consistently compare yourself to other people who are doing more than you or better than you, the majority of humans, just by human nature, nothing wrong with it, it's human nature, the majority of us don't get inspired. We don't look at someone else who has more or is doing better or bigger and say, geez, I want to grow up and be like them and get inspired. Human nature makes us go, man, what's wrong with me? And then you immediately get down on yourself. There are some folks who can look at others and be like, I inspire to be like them and I'm going to be like them someday. And they take it as inspiration. But if you're the type of folks, the folks, type of folks, that's not even proper English. If you're the type of person who looks at someone else who's doing better and bigger than you and it makes you feel less, it makes you feel small, it makes you have self-doubt, it makes you just feel down on yourself like, why can't I be that good? Stop it. Listen. If you're, if you've been on eBay for six months, even let's say, and you've got 200 listings and you're looking at someone with 4,000 listings, who's been doing this for a couple of years, has a YouTube channel and uh, clearly knows what they're doing. That's you five years in the future. Don't make them let them make you feel bad about yourself. You're not even to that part yet. Remember everyone you look at that's doing really great started where you start. We all started in the same place. Listen, at one point, Keith and I have five listings on eBay and we took our $20 to the bins and we bought 20 pounds of stuff. And when that started to sell, we took the next $20 of profit and got 20 pounds of stuff. And that's how we started. And we just kept doing that over and over. And then eventually we were branching out to 99 cent day. And look, now we're buying 55,000 remotes at a time and we're buying wholesale. And if you look at us and you've only got 50 listings, yeah, you probably might wonder, well, why can't I do that? Because you're not too there yet. That's up. That's the only thing. You're not there yet. And that's okay because we all started at the same place. We all started with nothing. We all probably started with listing the things from around our own house and our family members and took our first couple of bucks to a thrift or yard sale and brought those items home and listed them and you grow up. And if you compare yourself to others and it makes you feel down about yourself or bad or like you're not doing enough, you need to stop it. Don't compare yourself to other people. Focus on what you're doing. And the only, only person you should be competing with is yourself. You. You need to do better today than you did yesterday. And tomorrow, you need to, or sorry, the next day, you need to do better than you do tomorrow. And in October, you need to do better than you did in September. And in 2021, you need to do better than you did in 2020. Every day, every week, every month, every quarter, every year, you and your business needs to be doing better than you and your business was doing yesterday, last week, last month, last quarter, last year. And that's the only person you should be competing with. If you are consistently listing 10 items a day, try 15 a day. When you get to where you're listing 15 a day, list 20 a day. If you're consistently Listing on eBay, it's time to branch out to Poshmark. But every day you should be increasing what you're doing and being better than you were and doing more than you were yesterday. Don't worry about anybody else. Um, I think the other side of this is a, is a downward spiral too. Sometimes some people can look at others and compare themselves and when they see that they're doing better, they get, for lack of a better word, they get shitty about it. And we've seen these types of personalities in the Facebook groups. Um, the boastful, chest beating, look at me, I'm better than everybody else. That's my Gaston voice. <laughs> but we've all seen them. They like need to compare themselves to others to come out on top to feel better about themselves. And those are kind of ugly people very small people who are looking for a way to make themselves feel better and bigger. 
and that's gross. But I feel like all of us could fall into that trap if we worry too much about what others are doing and not just worrying about ourselves. You could either end up feeling less like, oh, why can't I be as good as them? And then you feel bad about yourself. And that could start a whole spiral where you feel discouraged and you don't want to do anything. And then you're making excuses and then you're not working. Or you just turn into a big fat snot head because you think you're better than everybody because everyone you're comparing yourself to, you're coming out on top. And I don't want to see that happen to any of you either way. So just worry about yourself. Stay in your own lane. If you want to look at others for inspiration, that's fine. But keep it at that. Keep it at the inspiration. Keep it at that. Look at them. Say, oh, they're inspiring. They were homeless and now they live in a mansion and they sell on eBay and that's great. Good for them. That's going to be me one day. But for the most part, just worry about yourself. What do you need to learn today? What do you need to research, list, photograph, source? What accounting do you need to do? What If you actually filled your day fully with tasks of your business and your family and your friends and your life and you had a full life, you really wouldn't have time to worry about anybody else. And I'm telling you that from an honest place. I don't worry about anybody else. I don't compare myself to anybody else. I don't give a flying rat butt what people think about me. I don't care. I'm busy. I am busy. I am so busy. I have no time to worry about anybody else but myself and Keith and what we're doing for our business and our family and our lives. We fill our lives fully with the, with this job and the tasks we have to do every day for this job. And then we fill our free time with things that spark joy in us. So if you have time to be looking at other people and preparing yourself, you need to fill that time with something else. Because if you're busy all the time, if you're, if you're doing things that make you happy or you're busy with your business, you don't have time to look at other people worry about it. So work every day. Be busy with that. And when you're not working, fill your life with people and activities that make you happy, that give you joy, that keep you too busy to be looking at other people. All right, I'm going to keep, I'm going to catch up on the chat one more time. Um, not one more time again, but I will be looking at it again. Um, if you don't make it happen, no one else will. Da, da, da. I bought the entire Stephen King hardback book. Whoa. Ryan Mack, I am absolute. See, here we go. Ryan Mack, I am jealous of you. No, I am jealous, though. <laughs> um, that's awesome. That's awesome. So here's the thing. A lot of, a lot of resellers think I don't have enough listings. And you don't. None of us do. That's I'll tell you that right now. If you think you don't have enough listings, you don't. But don't compare yours to other people's. I have 2,400 and I don't have enough. I would like to have more. I would like to continue building and listing more. But I'm at a different place than someone who just started with 50 or someone who's been at this for a year with 1,000. I'm at a different place than you. So don't compare you to me. Because we've been at this much longer. There's two of us doing it, too, versus you might just have you. Um, but, you know, so don't compare yourself to others so much as, like, oh, I don't have as much as them. Because you don't know if how long they've been at this longer than you, if they have other people helping. But the answer is always no, you don't. <laughs> Even if Robert told me he didn't have enough, I would agree with him. Because we should all be growing and becoming bigger every day. Remember earlier when I said you got to keep making more money to make more money? That's how it works. You make more money, you reinvest, you make more money, you reinvest. And then in the meantime, the little extras you can do for yourself and your family, your goals, your dreams, the things you want. Um, Part-time for two years. Listen, I probably don't even know what I'm doing half the time. <laughs> I'm just really, really, really stubborn, and I really want this to work. It had to work. For me, it was sink or swim. I got injured at work. I was labeled disabled. Labeled disabled. <laughs> That's the song there, a poem. Labeled disabled. Got hurt at work. I was labeled as a, as having a disability. No one will hire me. It was sink or swim. It was this is going to work or <clears throat> poor house. So I made it work, and I'm really, really stubborn, and my dreams are 
big and I have no excuses. My dreams are so much bigger than my excuses. I don't have any because they're gone. And it may have been because it was such a desperation thing with me. I think a lot of times when folks are put in a situation with their back to the wall where it's sink or swim, they're going to swim. Um, but even if you're not in that position, you should have the same attitude. Listen, there's no excuses. Make your dreams big and be stubborn. You want this to work. Um, what are we laughing at? What did I miss? I see all these laughy faces and then I don't see anything. I feel like some of the chat doesn't show up on the YouTube. That shows up on the stream yard, whatever. Um, Debbie says, we have had our own business for 15 years and star spot on. Take your business serious. Thank you so much. Because um, it's true. If you could only bottle up your ambition, positivity, and kindness and sell it as a magical potion, you would be rich. I would buy in bulk. <laughs> Thank you, Melly. Um, but if I bottled it all up, I wouldn't have it to spew out at you guys on YouTube. It'd be all I would have none left, right? <laughs> Um, are we talking about Dave Ramsey? Because he's awesome. All right. We're going to come to number five. So listen, while I'm talking about number five, put your questions, comments, concerns in the chat, and I'll address them before I leave. Um, number five is a challenge. I'm not going to do it with you guys because I've done it twice in the past. I've actually... Um, Participated in this Casey the rock star flipper like back in 2017 2018 somewhere a year that's not now <laughs> He had this challenge on his channel and I did it along with him and others and Then like fast forward a year. I did a challenge on here to my viewers and participated in that so I've done this twice and I'm pretty good. I'm pretty set where I'm at because I've done this twice and um, oh, I've done it publicly as a challenge along with other resellers twice, but personally and privately for my own growth and my own um, drive, I check myself like once a month. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Um, because ever since the first couple of times I did this publicly with other resellers and participated in the challenge and shared my results, um, I felt like, you know, this is something you could feel like you really get on top of it when you participate in a challenge that forces you to get on top of it and look at look at what you're doing with your time. Um, but then it might be easy to kind of ease off and slack off as time goes on. So I do recheck myself about once a month, once every couple of months. Um, I'll take a day or two where I do this. And then I look at it and I have to chastise myself sometimes. And sometimes I can applaud myself and say, you're doing great. What's the challenge? For one week, I want you guys to keep track of where you're spending your time. And I want you to be honest about it. You can either write about it as you go through your day, which is what I like to do, but I'm also OCD. Or you can just kind of stop every couple hours and write stuff down. But I want you to be honest. I literally want you for one week to write on a piece of paper, get a little notebook like mine, this little pad I have, get one of these little spiral notebooks like this, get a notebook that's the spiral on the side, get some scratch papers and tape them together with your eBay tape. I don't care how you keep track of this. Like you could literally take paper and tape it together with eBay tape and that's fine. If you have a bullet journal, that's even better. Love bullet journals. But anyway, I literally want you for an entire week, for seven days, and to be 1,000% honest with yourself, write down what you do with your time. Write down 8 a.m., woke up, uh, had coffee, took vitamins, 8.30, took shower, and 9.30 to noon, I watched Netflix. I mean, if that's what you did, write it down. It's honesty. And then 12 to 4, I was on Facebook, and then I ate, and then I listed five things, and then, you know, like, write down where you're spending your time and how much time you're spending on the things you're spending. So write down what you're doing and how much time, because you will be surprised at the end of the seven days when you look back and realize I really spent four hours a day spread out on Facebook, just scrolling through groups and commenting on stuff. 
And if you would have spent that four hours on photographs and listing, how many items could you have, could you have gotten up? Don't know. A lot? <laughs> 40? 30? 20? Um, so yeah, that's what I want you to do. Just get somewhere where you're going to keep it all together. Start tomorrow morning. Go for seven days. I'm going to make a thread in the Facebook group. If you're not in my Facebook group yet, I don't know why you're not. It is the best reselling Facebook group on all of the internets. It's called the <laughs> Flippin' Hippos Reseller Pod, and it is really a great group. Not because it's my group, but because of the folks that are in it. The folks that are in it are the best of the best cream of the crop up from the reselling community. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a thread in there, and then you guys can all check in with each other if you want to do it publicly and share. Um, that was kind of what made me get my act together in the first place when I found out where I was wasting time was that I had to, one, be honest with myself, and two, I admitted it to other resellers. So it was like, one, I had to be honest and admit to myself, geez, I waste a lot of time, but then I had to show other people and tell them, and it was like, I don't ever want to do that again. Next time, I want to be the one that's like, look at me. It was all work. <laughs> so keep track of what you're doing every day, how much time you're spending on it, and take a look back at it in seven days and see, are you wasting time in a bunch of places? Are you not working as much as you should? Are you making excuses? Because the number one tip from tonight I want you to take home is stop making excuses stop it stop it now stop it stop it stop it don't make any more excuses from now until forever no more excuses don't do it don't do it your dreams your family your friends you yourself your goals your all of that is so much more important than some stupid excuses that you could be making every day instead of working so stop it this is a job Go to work every day, do the work, put the work in, reap the benefits. And um, your two things that I really wanted you guys to do was write your goals down somewhere where you can see them every single day, all day. Put them on a wall where you'll look at them more than once a day. Put them up there and then do this challenge where you keep track of your time every day. And be honest with yourself, really. If you spent... 10 hours on Facebook, I want you to write it down and be honest with yourself because the only way you're going to really benefit from this challenge and learn from it and grow from it is if you're honest with yourself. And you don't have to make it private, public. You don't have to go on the, the thread I'm going to create and participate. If you know you don't want to, you can just keep it to yourself. But you have to be honest with yourself. And um, worry about yourself. Don't care about other people. Be so busy. And so happy that you don't have time to worry about what anyone else is doing. Unless they're your family or your friends, people that you should be worried about. Um, I text how I speak. Um, all right. So you guys can keep filtering in um, some questions if you have a couple. I got a couple more minutes. Um, I always feel discouraged since I'm a newbie. Right, but your stuff isn't going to sell. Let me tell you this. We did not see consistent sales, daily sales, until we had over 500 listings on eBay. And even then, um, there was a day here or a day there where we had zero sales. You're not going to see piles like every day. Piles like every day. Like I'm, a, I'm like I'm a value girl today. You're not going to see daily consistent sales and piles of them until you have a thousand listings. So just be easy on yourself. Um, thank you, Debbie. That's so nice. The Facebook group is a really, really amazing place. Um, it's a safe space, I guess. I hate calling it that because it's so like trendy, but it really is. There's, there's not. In, the, in my Facebook group, there's not a lot of what you see in others Facebook groups. It's a very positive place. Everyone is very nice to each other. Um, everyone is very uplifting, answers questions without making you. You can ask, like, newbie questions in there. No one's going to make you feel stupid or dumb. Um, 
I did have to get on some folks about talking about politics over the weekend, but I think we learned we're not going to do that now, right? Because I'm going to be banning folks. Nope, not in that group. Okay, so um, at the beginning, did I let work every day? Yes, I did. Because um, what happened was I got injured at work and um, they refused to give me light duty and they refused my workers' comp. So I did have to sue my old employer. Um, and while we were waiting for the litigation, I was at home. And so I did this. And this was, an, this was actually, if you're new to the channel, this was Keith's business first. He was building it up while I was at my old job. And he intended to quit his job and do this full time. And um, he gave that up for me. And he a nice guy. <laughs> he gave it up for me when we discovered that I wasn't going to be able to go back to work. And um, we made it so I was able to do this job with all of the accommodations for my back and everything. And I just kind of took over. And he continued working at his job outside of the home for another couple years until we built it to where um, he could join me. He left his job in February of this year. Um, he left his job but like his first day home was March 1st because he gave notice and left at the end of February so the short answer is yes I did work every day but that's because I had nothing else to do <laughs> I was literally just sitting at home waiting on a court case and didn't have a job and no one would hire me and Keith had built this up pretty much enough to support one person as it were so he just continued working outside of the house and I kind of took over his business um the, the full-time aspect of it and then he joined me and took us a couple of years to build it up enough that we were comfortable enough with him for him to leave his job. Um, we saved up a pretty good amount of um, monthly expenses and bills, kind of like Dave Ramsey teaches you that emergency fund. We saved up like a year's worth of bills and um, I can't even think of the word I want. Expenses. <laughs> And we made enough money that we were comfortable. And so now we both do it. But yes, we did. And in fact, before, when I had no interest in this, when I was still working at my job before I got hurt, when Key started this for himself, um, he was working his full-time job and coming home and doing this every day. And then after I started helping him when I couldn't work, um, he still worked. Every, he worked two jobs, basically, for two years. So it's not easy. And not if you want to make it work. It's not going to be easy. But it's worth it. I guarantee you it's worth it. Um, so I schedule household chores and work along in with my business. Um, it's in my bullet journal, how it's split up. If you have never heard of Fly Lady Pamela, check her out. Google her, all one word, F-L-I-L-A-D-Y. She um, is an organizational guru, and she teaches a method of um, cleaning and decluttering your home that takes like 15 minutes a day and keeps your house spick and sp like, it, like, keeps your house clean, but you don't really feel like you ever clean. Like before I found her, I found her like, shoot, for 16 years ago. <laughs> I've been following Fly Lady for 16 years, but um, instead of having one day where you have to take the entire day to clean your house from top to bottom and you, you hate it and it's drudge work, she breaks it up to where like on Mondays you vacuum and Tuesdays you dust and Wednesdays you sweep and mop and it's all broken up. So you're spending maybe 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes a half an hour a day on your household work and your chores and then it's always done and you're not, you're not spending a lot of time on it. Um, fly lady so yes we we do work that in with our days um i say we because keith helps out he's here all day too marilyn just went over and signed up for the facebook group um put in a good word for me um i will um be approving i haven't had time to eat dinner yet guys we did go to upgrade our phones today i've already got my baby yoda back on my new one <laughs> i had to put my baby yoda back on but we went to get our S20s, fancy, and it went longer than it should have, and we didn't have time to eat before I went live. So I will uh, give around 9 o'clock. I'll go on the Facebook group. I'll approve all the new members. So make sure you're, you uh, sign up for the group, and then I'll put up a thread for the challenge. Um, 
I don't think there's such a thing as oversourcing. If you would have asked me that this time last year, I would have said, yes, get rid of your death piles. And then I got rid of my death piles and then the shutdown happened and I didn't have any inventory. And um, now I am a firm believer that everyone should have a stockpile. All right, I'm gonna answer Greg's question that's off topic from reselling last, but not least, and then I'm gonna let you guys go. Um, I have not finished Gone Girl. So I know I mentioned on my live show Friday, I had I was finishing a book I was reading and I was gonna start Gone Girl Friday night. Um, didn't happen that way. <laughs> Casey and I found this new game on the phone that we could play together. Casey the Rockstar Flipper, if you're not familiar, um, some horror game. You could play as the villain or the victim. Stupid, okay, that was the biggest waste of time. But anyway, Casey and I found this game and we were on the phone and we were trying to play the game and it took up my whole night. Um, and so I didn't even get started on Gone Girl until like Sunday night. So I'm, I could tell you exactly how far I am. I always have my stuff moved over when I get a new phone. I love that they can do that. They can just like, so I get my new one and it's already got my apps all set up for me and everything. It's got my baby Yoda. I'm only 20% through the book. So I will let you know when I finish it. So far, so good. This guy is a really good author. If you guys like to read and you like horror or thriller, I recommend Gone Girl. And he has other books too. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much dun, 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 for joining me tonight. Hopefully I wasn't too hard on you guys. But like I said at the beginning, it really does come from a good place. I want everyone to succeed. I want everyone to be successful. And I can't be held accountable or as a good teacher or a good role model on YouTube if I just coddle you and only tell you when you're doing good. Got to give you the tough love sometimes. So hopefully you took something away from this that will help you. And hopefully you do the challenge and you're honest with yourself so that you can fix the areas that you're fixing and your time wasting. Um, and thank you so much to Greg for this, the super chat of $5. We appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up before you leave. It helps the channel so, so much. And subscribe if you haven't already. Help us feed our hungry hippos. And um, don't forget to join the Facebook group if you haven't already. And um, that would make sense. Her name's Gillian. Greg says Gillian's a lady writer. I don't know why I thought it was a guy. Why did I think it was a dude? Probably because I mostly read dudes. Yep. That's why. All right, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you so, so much for spending an hour with me tonight. And uh, go be productive. Go make some money. And stop making excuses. You guys are the best. Bye.